Hey there, Ride the Car Guy here, and today let's take the engine out of this Titan. All right, I really like to avoid going underneath the truck because it's really early and I don't want to do that yet. So we're going to start with the engine slingers. There's one for each side in the front and there's one in the rear that goes where the starter is. If you know anything about this engine, you know the starter is buried in the back of the V. And so we need to take off the intake manifold. And to do that, we need to take off um, hoses, electric, all kinds of stuff. And so we'll do that. And then we'll have to take off 10 millimeter bolts. I think there's um, probably two, four, six, maybe 12 on the top. And then uh, we'll have access to the starter. I grabbed my leaf blower and I blew this off just so, um, you know, when we take this off, when you take the manifold off, we're not dropping stuff into the, um, into the cylinders. I'm gonna start with electronics. So we have the connection for the throttle body up front. We have, uh, this is probably like an EVAP purge cylinder or purge valve. It's gonna have a little retainer clip on it. So pop that off. There we go. Down each side, you'll have your injector uh, connections. Obviously, there's gonna be four each side, totaling eight. Luckily, the injectors just pop right off with intake manifold. We don't have to remove the fuel rail separately. So there's the four on that side, and then do the same on the other side. There's a large uh, sub harness or piece of the harness that is connected to the fuel rail on this side. You just wanna pinch those connectors, pop them both out to gain access. There we go, that frees that up. And that will give you access, of course, to take off the injector connections on this side. So if I look around, it looks like there is the hose that came from the booster. That's already disconnected from the booster side. Your EVAP line is disconnected. Fuel line, of course, is already done. So it looks like we're almost ready to rock. We just have to take off, uh, looks like these two little lines right here going into the throttle body. I think these are coolant lines. So just pop these off and then we uh, should be able to take off those bolts. Oh, that's not true. Looks like there's a 10 millimeter um, that is retaining the transmission dipstick. So that and these two, then we'll be ready to rock. Dipstick retention bolt. I'm gonna go back through and manually pull out each one of these. I have a little magnet head here and that just ensures that, uh, that I don't drop them or lose them anywhere. And it also ensures that they're fully out, right? With these being torqued down, especially if you've never taken it off before, it might be a little tough because uh, it's been, you know, smashed against this thing for a long time. But let's just take a look here. Oh yeah, that's on pretty tight. Gently pry from the side, I guess, against the cylinder head. I don't think we're gonna hurt anything if we do that. So let me go get a little pry bar. Oh, well, there you have it. That was very simple. Just enough to kind of jar it off. I just didn't want to like, you know, yank on this connection or yank on this little bar, none of that. So uh, with those loose, you're gonna have a lot of crap that probably gets caught because we have a bunch of hoses hanging off this thing. So just gently lift straight up and then pull it away. There you go. I'm going to wipe all this up as much as I can. And I always like to get some painter's tape and tape over these just to avoid, uh, you know, avoid dropping stuff into them. I also like to grab a flashlight just on the off chance that something fell in while we were taking it out. Alrighty, for our starter, there is a 13 millimeter on top right here. That needs to get pulled off. Just gonna put the nut back on this post, of course. And then back here, there is a, I think it's like a 10 or a 12, but I wanna take the actual mounting bolts off first. That way we can just flip it around. And then additionally, there is a connector, which is kind of strange. There's a little connector back here. I'm assuming it's just a grounding strap, but there's a connection back here with two retaining clips holding them onto other brackets. So I'm gonna disconnect it and then pull the little um, retention clips out. All right, and then one more little clip back here, one that they make sure you can't see for some reason. Just gonna yank it out. It doesn't need a retaining clip exactly 1.5 inches from the actual connector. There we go. So that's free. And now let's uh, get the rear mounting bolts off. These should be, I believe, 14s. Let's double check. Yep, they are. Probably gonna be on there way tight. So I don't know, maybe, maybe hammer it with something. I'm gonna see if I can fit my half inch back there. Should make it a little easier. There we go. There's one. Not too bad once they're broken loose. Don't know why they're so darn long, but let's grab the other one and we're ready to rock. Once you flip it around, you'll see the nut right here that needs to be removed. That's probably a 12. Yes, it is. That out. You can actually fully remove the starter. Now, normally I would say, take these bolts and put them back in. But first of all, they actually screw directly into the starter. But also, 
we're going to use them to mount the uh, engine slinger to the back of the engine. So let's go grab that and put it in. Oh, I actually recall now I did not use the uh, original starter bolts because they ended up looking way too short for me. So I went and bought these. They're just a little bit longer. Same thread pitch as the starter, but a little bit longer. And uh, here is the rear engine slinger. So I was gonna say I'll put the part number on there, but there it is. There you have it. That's the rear one. And hopefully the uh, two front ones also have the sticker on it. So I'm just gonna grab these, feed it through, and cinch it down. Once they're through far enough, you can actually spin them from the front. Save yourself some thumb energy. You don't have to go absolutely crazy on torque, but just make sure that they're tight. It's not like they're gonna back out a whole bunch while lifting the engine. They are 14s, just like the originals. Awesome, that's done. Feeling nice and strong, let's do the two front ones. All right, now on the left side of the engine, the slinger goes into uh, these two little holes here. Well, allow me to apologize in advance. I'm editing this video and realizing that my microphone cut out and then it switched over to the native microphones in the camera, which are god awful. So uh, I might do some captions. I might voice over, I'm not sure yet, but just uh, sorry about that. I cinched them all the way down and this is super loose, but not sure if I really care. Actually, you know what? I definitely don't care. Let's move on. Now at worst, all you're gonna do is uh, damage the threads, but these are bolts that I <clears throat> specifically bought for this task, so it should be all right. And if I drop it and break the engine, then I guess I don't have to keep going, and it saves me a lot of work. Uh, unfortunately, on the right side of the engine, the portion that we're gonna use is uh, being taken up by the power steering pump mount. So we have to drop the, whatever this is called, belt, drop the belt, pull that off, pull off our power steering pump, and then we'll be able to mount the slinger on the front. It's gonna loosen our guy here. There we go. Pull off of that. There you have it, belt's off. All right, our annoying little bolts in question, right here. You have this hose that goes up to the reservoir. I'm actually gonna pop it off at the reservoir side. It doesn't really matter which one you pull it off at. So choose one, pull it off, and then we'll take off these bolts. All right, with that, we should, oh, there's a third one, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Oh, and the fourth? Oh my gosh. So there is a third and fourth bolt holding that bracket in. You have to take off the alternator and the power steering pump and all of that. I think, if I recall, I bought bolts long enough to not have to do all that. So let me go see. The mount on this side looks like this. It has two uh, kind of extenders in it. I'm sure just to sort of bridge that gap, right? So if I slide it down here, come on, there we go. Pretty sure the bottom one's a longer one, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's good thinking. Just to compliment myself, you know? Yes, there's a ton of thread. Okay. So apparently I thought of that back when I pulled this off last and I got long enough bolts to uh, accommodate for the bracket so we don't have to remove the bracket. Definitely not the preferred method of doing it. Skipping all over that head, but they're really strong metal, so. All right, we are calling that one on. All right, a quick aside here. The more I thought about it, the more I told myself, I know I have bolts that fit that left side engine mount. So I had these lying around that I thought were it, but I went and found these, and these are actually the right size, believe it or not. So um, I found shorter ones, I'm gonna actually secure it, and we'll be ready to rock. Yeah, that's, uh, that's much better. All right, it looks like I can't uh, avoid it any longer. Let's move down below and take off the front differential, the exhaust header connectors to the mid pipes on the exhaust, and what else? Oh, and the transmission cross member. So once we get all of those, we should be ready to pull the mounts, the engine mounts, and pull. All right, we're gonna start by removing the front axles, and these are 14 millimeter bolts. There should be, what is that, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven on there. So I'm gonna just loosen these. Okay, probably gonna have to use the foot method here. Huh. That would be me tightening them. Doing it again, ugh, God. Loosen as many as you can reach on both sides and then we will, uh, then we'll rotate our tires and uh, hit the rest. All right, for this, very simple, grab a block, 
So I have our jack, and quickly get it jacked up, and then rotate our tire to get those two bolts that we couldn't get before. Easy enough, drop it back down, lock it in place, grab those last two I couldn't reach before, and then do the same on the other side. Once you have them loosened and then pull them all away, you should have enough slop in your CVs to pull them away from the front differential. All right, with all of those removed, I have my 19 millimeter impact, 19 millimeter wrench, and there's three bolts under there. I also slid my transmission jack underneath there. I dropped this the last time I removed it. I'll probably drop it again. Just be as careful as you can. Don't let it fall on your fingers. I'm gonna get the transmission jack on what I think is the heaviest part. Loosen the nuts, pull the nuts off, and then that way I can just pull the pins or the bolts really easily when I'm ready to release it. All right, we have one bolt here, and that's a bolt with like a welded nut on the other side. This is a nut and bolt combo, and that's a nut and bolt combo. So I'm gonna pull the nuts off, basically pull the nut side off and leave the bolts in, and then remove this first, and then pull those pins to drop it. I keep saying pins, I mean bolt, you know what I mean. So I'm first gonna tuck this up, just kind of get it where I think it's, you know, least likely to fall, which actually I should probably do that. Let's do that. I think that might be our best bet. I don't know. Like I said, last time I dropped it, so what do I know? That looks good. All right, grab the bolt side, a 19 mil. Set it to loosen, yeah, there we go. I'm gonna have to get a breaker bar. I must have really ranked these things down last time. All right, this one is being utterly impossible. I got the other two. I got the front left and the rear left. And so I think what I need to do is actually raise this up so I can fully swing my uh, uh, breaker bar down. Because right now it's just hitting the concrete. So if I give myself enough room to swing that down, I should be able to pull it up. All right, make sure that your e-brake is on nice and tight for this because uh, you could just push the truck right off the jack, which is definitely not what you want to do. <sighs> I don't know what the heck happened here. Oh my God. Wow. With all three of those loose, I'm going to raise the jack up until it touches the differential. I'm gonna pull the pins, the rear one first. There we go. And then this one second. Maybe we should have done that one first, huh? Come on. There we go. And then this one third. I have a feeling the whole thing's just gonna fall on me. So we'll just stand back, you know? Oh, didn't fall. <clears throat> so I'm going to, as slowly as I can and gently as I can, lower this. Make sure that your axles are kind of tucked away here. I'm going to put my impact on the lowest setting. Ah, okay. Okay, is that actually working? Oh, okay. This appears to be working, maybe? Wow. Oh, oops, I forgot about the breather hose. <laughs> there we go. Now that it's lower, I'm just gonna kinda roll it, there we go, to one side to get it off the jack, and then set it down. There we go. Cool. I don't think I did any lasting damage. Differential. Next, I want to remove a portion of the exhaust, it's the portion that goes from the headers back to like the Y pipe, kind of like it's kind of like the midsection of the exhaust, and that's going to make it easier. Well, first of all, you have to do it. You have to do it. Disconnect the headers to pull it out. But just fully removing those is going to make it easier to pull off the transmission cross member as well. So I have 15s in the front. I'm not sure. It might be 14s for you. I have new headers on this that had came with new. Uh, they came with new nuts, but uh, 15 in the front, 14 in the rear, four bolts per side. Remove the um, connection for the O2 sensor and they should come right out. I'll show you on this side. All of this sort of pushes against uh, one another. So um, you can just take all these off and then it'll still hold itself in place. All right, still on level one here. We'll go straight to three. All right, I gotta go extract this nut from my socket and then just keep going. Basically repeat that on both sides. There's a grounding strap on the other side. Shouldn't affect what you're doing. And then disconnect uh, your O2 sensors as well. All 
All right, with that removed, we are pretty much out of things that are in our way. So I'm going to take a break, come back tomorrow, but all we have left to do is drop that cross member, uh, you know, make sure it's supported, the transmission that is, hook up our engine hoist to the front, and pull the engine mounts and go. So uh, let's do that. All right, we are back, and uh, sorry for all that unfortunate audio, but next we're going to clear everything out underneath, and I'm going to remove the bolts for the transmission cross member, but not remove the cross member. I'm gonna come back out, and then I'm gonna pull the front tires off, and then I'm gonna sort of kneel the truck down. That way, basically, the transmission isn't sitting on a jack, and I'm moving the transmission around when I'm kneeling the truck. So remove the bolts when we have the most space, kneel it, go back, remove the cross member, and then remove our front mounts and go. But before we do any of that, I gotta push this all back and make room for the engine hoist. All right, that's pushed back. Now we want to just take off these bolts on the cross member. They're 17 millimeter and uh, they're just nut and bolt combos. So remove all four. Don't worry, it's certainly not gonna fall out. The thing is uh, absolutely jammed in there. So I also forgot we need to take the, um, some fluid out of the transfer case, right? because when we tilt that transmission, it's just gonna pour out the uh, output shaft. Now that those are loose, we're gonna take an H10 and pull the drain plug from the transfer case. Um, I think this fluid's like brand new, right? I must've put it in when I did this transmission last time, but that's all right. Drain it and that way you're not pouring it out when you pull the transmission out. You technically don't have to drain the entire thing. Uh, you just have to get it low enough that, uh, you know, it doesn't pour out everywhere. All right, good enough for me. I really prefer to not go rebuy this stuff. It turns out that OEM fluids are very expensive. All right, for kneeling it, we want to grab our jack and I'm going to lift this up, take the tire off, and then I'm going to uh, get jack stands and I'm going to lower it as much as I can without hitting the actual engine hoist. Last time on the Xterra, I uh, set the Xterra right on the poor little engine hoist there. So just high enough to get the tire off. All right. All right, let's see how low we can go here. Awesome. Then just repeat on the other side and make sure that the uh, engine hoist can move freely. Well, I'll tell you, I really didn't think this through. The jack stands, I put them literally right next to the transmission cross member. So I don't think it will obstruct, um, but it may, and I may have to throw a jack under each side to make room, but not the end of the world. That still moves around freely. I did not pinch it underneath, so that's still fine. And the truck is very low to the ground, so let's support that transmission, drop that cross member, and pull this thing. I'm gonna grab the transmission mount and bring it up to the bottom of the transmission before we start pulling the cross member. Now, the last time I did this and I reinstalled it, I put a ton of chassis grease all over each side of it before reinstalling, so let's hope that that actually did something. I'm also going to skip directly to the method that worked before, which is finding a spot uh, on the frame that I can kind of cross a piece of wood over and then jack it up to uh, yank down on it. So let's find uh, one with a bunch of rusty nails in it. Awesome, right here. And uh, let's find a place to slide it in. All right, there we go. Ho, 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 is it already coming out? Oh yeah, like nothing. Uh oh. Oops. Well, that's what I get for using the broadside. But it did uh, push it out a whole bunch already. What if we just went ahead and flipped it around? Made progress, even though we sacrificed our little board here. Let's go get another one. Oh, I'm a complete idiot. We have to remove the transmission from the cross member. I think I'm just getting a little too excited to finish this. One day I'm really, really gonna break something with how careless I am, but those are uh, three 17 millimeters. Gotta pull those out first. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of tension on there, but not the end of the world. All right, I found a two by four that's in slightly better condition. And uh, we're gonna swing to the other side. Now that this one's most of the way out, when we go to the other side and we get that one all the way out, this you just have to kind of wiggle and it'll fall out. Fortunately, we really have to use the broadside. It just, it just doesn't grab enough meat up here. Here we go. There we are. Awesome. Transmission looks like it didn't move an absolute millimeter, which is cool. And that one was 
even easier than the Xterra, which means I think my globbing on of chassis grease really did help. <clears throat> Unfortunately, what, uh, what I thought was gonna happen happened, and I didn't give myself enough space in these, uh, between these jack stands. <sighs> Hoping, there we go. I just had to lift where the jack stand started to taper, and that allowed me to uh, pull it out, so. <sighs> Strap it up and pull the motor mounts. Much like with the Xterra, we are going to lift this up with enough space to get our load leveler on, and then just strap to the three slingers. Set this up, put one sort of short-ish chain in the rear. And I'm gonna put my slack on the engine side. I don't think it really matters. So, all right. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna raise this up a notch or two until it's about even. There we go. And then uh, just grab another two. For these, I'm gonna just hook both up um, with the first link up here. There we go. And then link it back up. And then I'm gonna count the links when I do this. So I want them just even on both sides. So grab this one, lay it over here. And then the same with this one over there. Great. And then find one that looks good. So like maybe right there, maybe a little bit more slack so it can be like, so it's actually pulling up, you know? And then this one, we just have to drag through. So throw it on this side like this. Please work, there we go. And then grab our chain and put it through. This doesn't really feel like an exact science, but all right. I'm gonna do 12 on both sides. Does that seem good? That seems good, right? I'm gonna pump it up a couple uh, goes here. Oh, well, wow, that's pretty darn straight, isn't it? So I'm just putting a little bit of tension on it. Well, not that much. Holy crap. Just a little bit of tension. There we go. Now we can confidently remove our engine mounts and not worry about, um, you know, it falling or anything like that. These are nice and easy for us. We just have two 17 millimeter bolts on the side. You're looking at the left side and I just have a bunch of extensions on my impact. Slide it down and go. All right, both of those are out. And then do that on the other side. All right, with those disconnected on both sides, uh, now comes the fun part of uh, kind of doing our first lift, see if we can get it to float freely and uh, you know, figure out what we forgot. So I'm just gonna give it a few small pumps here. And remember our transmission is kind of loose down there. All right, well, bad start. I'm lifting and the engine slingers are uh, bending and the engine is not moving. Is there some like giant glaring thing I'm forgetting? Or is it just maybe incredibly heavy? That could be a possibility too. Just giving a little wiggle. Transmission is loose, kind of wagging its tail here. Oh, okay. There it goes. Just kind of had to spring free, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Um, well, I'm gonna give it a couple more pumps. There we go. I am hitting the uh, inner cowl type thing here. Not really that worried about it, if I'm being honest, but um, I can already tell you, I'm gonna bend this out of the way. This is our um, AC line. It is like crazy tight over here, but I'm gonna go around and just look, see if there's stuff that I missed. Over here looks clear. So does this. On the bright side, well, uh-oh. Eh, I might have to do the shifter linkage again, or the steering linkage again, because it looks like it's gonna get in the way. I'm gonna try to get around that, but we'll see. All right, I changed my mind. I am going to pull that linkage. It's really, it's one bolt. It's like 10 or 12 millimeter, and then that steering linkage pops off. And so uh, I really don't want to, uh, I don't want to fight it. There's no reason to fight it. So I'm gonna grab some extensions and pop that off. Let's verify that it's a 12 here. Especially now that the engine is partially lifted, it's uh, really easy to get to, so. And then now we should be able to just give it the old one, two. Oh, I regret this. That's it, we're gonna try to go over it. My patience is fully exhausted, so we're just gonna try to go higher and go over top of it. So close. There it goes. Stupid fucker. 
Should have just done that in the first place. Okay, check on my transmission. That's fine down there, right? Doing its thing. And I'm checking the uh, transmission tunnel. And guess what we didn't do? <sighs> the transmission shifter linkage. You know what guys, just turn this video off. Go watch someone else. Clearly I'm not doing this right. <sighs> Let's go take that off. All right, like I said, there's always something I forget. So now that that's out, I'm gonna make sure this is continuing to sort of free float here. And that looks good. I'm just gonna continue to slowly move it out. I'm gonna take this linkage and actually move it out of the way here. Just up and out, up and out until the transmission needs to go down. But as of right now, uh, actually I say that, but the cats are actually hitting the frame here on this side. So let me lift it up a little bit until I can anymore. Yeah, they're still hitting. I still have space in the transmission tunnel, but I am gonna drop the back of the transmission just a tiny bit. That's gonna tighten up around the cats, but it's gonna free up the area under the transmission tunnel. I'm hoping that gives us enough space up here to get the cats over top of the frame. Yeah, looking like it actually. All right, we can continue to go up. This is great actually, very cool. I think we're almost there. Now I want the transmission to go back up. So we're kind of working the, the cats. There's like a piece of frame. We're kind of working the cats over top. We still have a surprising amount of space to go up. I'm making sure I'm checking the firewall, checking the transmission tunnel. It looks like we can just keep going up, up, up. So should have no issue getting these out. All looks good. Let's keep going. All right, I'm gonna shift the weight back now. That is significantly lower. And let's keep going higher on the engine. I don't like this at all. I'm shifting my weight again, a little bit further, trying to move to the front, very difficult to do. Even more height. All right, this one is over it, so I'm gonna try to kind of turn the engine. Yep, there we go, just like that. Okay, much better. Here we go. Whew, shit. All right, well, it's over it. There we go. So now, I gotta figure out how to get this transmission over this. How, is that falling off? Yeah. Now with those out, I'm gonna grab this. There we go, get some weight off of that. All right, right up against that steering rack. If I put weight on the transmission jack, I should be able to use this uh, uh, balancer with a lot more ease. Oh yeah, wow. Let's see if it'll go any higher here. Yep, <clears throat> okay. Trying to get as much weight up front as I can. It's getting a lot easier to do, which I'm assuming is a good sign. I don't really know. Now, how did I do this last time? Ooh, that's pretty light. Feels like almost weightless on that transmission jack. Probably not, but let me go see if I can easily lift it. Oh yeah, wow, okay, I actually can. So, I'm just gonna lift this and push. There. All right, gently set it on that. Okay. Load balancer comes in clutch. See that little tiny crack in the floor? Those are actually really hell when you're trying to use these types of casters. Ah, ah, there, Jesus. Okay, rotate around. My garage is too small. All right, that is one VK56 out of the Titan. I'm gonna find a way to set this down now. All right, that's it. The uh, VK56 is now officially out of the Titan. Um, during this process, I decided that I'm probably gonna part out this white truck. So, um, you know, it's, it's not all bad. It, if you've been following along, then you know that this was uh, infested with mice when it was stored in Kentucky over the winter time. And uh, it just reeks like piss inside and it just really uh, doesn't make me very happy. So when I reached out to all of you to help source a Titan, Richard, a guy over in Pennsylvania, a nice guy, uh, gave me a steal of a deal on another Titan. So I bought that. That's gonna, now gonna be my Titan that I use for videos moving forward. And this one, I will um, probably take a lot of parts off for myself to store for spares, and then I'll also sell a lot off of it. So if you have a Titan and you need something off of it, certainly let me know. And if I can part with it, I will part with it and send it your way. This was an absolute mountain of work just to get this out. Um, like I said earlier in the series, I was working with Duncan to just source me a VK56 so I didn't have to pull it out of this Titan because this is a you know perfectly good one and the truck was perfectly fine um, until they're mice. But uh, looking back, I probably would have done that. 
So if you are interested in getting help sourcing a VK56 transmission and engine and you know ECM and all of that, definitely reach out to Duncan at Nissan Parts Puller. His information will be down in the description below. Thank you for tolerating the obnoxious noise issues. Um, if you like this video, please go ahead, scroll down, click that like button, subscribe to follow along with the project. The next section is super exciting. It's actually when we start the process of getting this into the Xterra. So be sure to follow along with that and we'll see you in the next one.